going to take a little sojourn here and um, go off on a little tangent about movies every so often and so that's what this video is about. I wanted to do a video dealing specifically with movies that shaped my style. A lot of you really enjoyed the video that I did about my top uh, 10 favorite movies or five favorite movies, whatever. And some of you expressed that you would really like to see more videos about movies. So we will do these every so often, maybe even music videos. Uh, well, not music videos, but movies and <laughs> videos about music. The Women is a great, great movie. It's a black and white film. Um, I forget who directed it, but I will put his name down here. It's, at the, it's like right on the, right there. Anyway can't remember, but it stars all some of the best, best actresses from that time period. Norma Shearer, Rosalind Russell, Joan Fontaine, Paulette Goddard, all kinds of wonderful, wonderful character actresses from that decade uh, or from that time period. So it's definitely a who's who when it comes to the cast. But the most interesting thing about it is that unlike hardly any movies that have been made before or since, it deals with all women. There are no men in the cast. They are alluded to and they have a very much an impact on the story, but there are no men, no actors in the movie at all. And that get already gives it a fun kind of like um, stylish vibe. But we'll get to the style and the fashion in a second. First of all, the plot, it's really just a story about catty females and how they influence one another's lives. And because these are high society ladies, they have a very different life than just, um, you know, a standard working class woman. They actually live to shop and take care of their um, social life. So it's a very, very different world. It starts in a beauty salon, and the beauty salon is unlike anything that I personally have ever seen. I know it used to be a lot more common back in the day, but these were salons that were like multi-leveled, and each level was dedicated to a different aspect of a woman's beauty, whether it be her fitness. There were fitness. There was a fitness level. There was a level devoted to the aesthetics, like mud baths and facial masks and things like that. Um, cosmetics and hair, of course, hairstyling, hairdressing was huge. And then there was also a level that was dedicated to nails, and that's where you get the impression there was quite a bit of gossiping that went on. Now, gossiping goes on throughout the place, but gossiping in this nail area was something that women, these women actually went there for. So the nail technicians had to know all the best gossip on all the ladies that came here. So it was sort of like reading the social column. And Rosalind Russell's character, named Sylvia, goes to the salon and finds out a bit of information about one of her friends, and we use the term friends loosely because she's just awful, uh, but she finds out a little bit of tidbit of information about her friend Mary Haynes, who is considered to be, um, sort of lead a charmed life. She's got the perfect husband, and she's got a little girl, and she's very well loved in society. She's not just a society female, she's well loved because she's a um, does a lot of great things and she's got a very good heart. So when something bad is found out about this sweet lady, then of course the first thing that, that Sylvia does is tell all of her friends. And the way that this culminates into um, the changes that Mary must go through in her life and how she deals with the situation, whether or not she should deal with it as an independent female or whether or not she should be forgiving and react the way that women maybe would have years before, is all really what the story's about. All the acting is great. It's in a perfect ensemble cast. Watch this movie if you haven't seen it yet. It is phenomenal. But one of the things that makes it so great is not just the quick little quippy one-liners and the great acting and the great dialogue. The dialogue is incredible um, and super quotable. We, I, me and my friends always quote this movie. But it also deals with fashion in a way that I have never seen before this movie came out. It deals with fashion where the fashion plays an integral part in the story. There is a certain dress that Rosalind Russell wears that I believe all the designs are by Adrian. So look him up. He was sort of a surreal, sort of avant-garde designer, but he was still someone who the ladies that were in high society actually used often. It wasn't just like for runways or fashion shows. This was stuff that these ladies actually wore to make it an impact. And there's a, a blouse that Rosalind Russell wears at the beginning with eyes all over it that's just hilarious, but also incredible and so, so cool. 
uh, the hats and there's scenes within the department stores so you actually get to see how the department stores especially the cosmetic counters got to operated back then so that's all very interesting as well but the way that the ladies shopped in this particular class of society was they actually would go to these fashion shows that were extremely elaborate and then they would just pick and choose what they wanted to have brought back to the dressing room for them so there's a fashion show that features in a very integral part of the story and the fashion show is in color so it's I didn't know this because the first time I saw it was on a black and white television I didn't know it was in color and then I saw because my grandmother had a black and white television but when I saw it in in the way it was meant to be seen in full color it just makes the fashions even more incredible and there are some I'll probably intersperse in here you'll see that are just so memorable and so kooky and, and interesting so this is why this movie sort of shaped my style and my taste. It's not because I cater towards the 1930s aesthetic or that I trend towards that. I, I do like 1930s fashion. I think some of the some of the evening gowns are absolutely beautiful, but it's not my my decade of choice when it comes to the aesthetic. What it did though is it really really showed me how that you could take kooky weird design details and make them work and make them still look extremely fashionable and I think very wearable. So tell me your opinions on this. Go see it. That's your assignment. Go see this movie and then let me know what your opinions are. If you've already seen it, then give me your opinions now. But let me know how this movie influenced you as far as the style goes particularly, but also what your opinion is of it. Um, I give it a 10 out of 10 for, for sure. I think that it's an absolutely perfect. It goes on a little long. I would say the movie could really be told, could be said that it it's in three major parts. And those three parts, you could almost watch them independently of one another and you wouldn't lose anything because they really do stand on their own. But the fashion is something you see. There's a bathroom in this movie that is shown in detail and uh, you don't see the toilet didn't see the toilet back then but there's a bathroom shown in detail in this movie that you will never forget and it's completely ridiculous and wonderful so there's a lot about it that I think can be said for how it influenced me when it comes to style but also just how it speaks of the time period that it's supposed to be from but that's the movie I wanted to talk about today um, again let me know your opinion and we'll get back and do some more of these ty types of videos um, like style videos that were movies that were really about style and how that they influenced me or how they affected me but also we'll do some videos just about movies in general and the reason I think you should see them or not see them but that's all for now